Hi class, welcome to your next screencast. This is going to be on chemical bonds. I want to first start off talking about compounds versus molecules. It can be very hard to use these two, two ter terms because they're so similar. But a compound is any sort of thing that's made of more than one type of atom. So in the examples over here, we have nitrogen oxide, or excuse me, yeah, nitrogen oxide or nitric oxide. So there's a nitrogen and an oxygen, two different atoms. Here we have water. We have at least two different atoms, hydrogen and oxygen. Here we have nitrogen dioxide with nitrogen and oxygen, and then carbon with oxygen to make carbon dioxide. So two or more different types of atoms. But molecules, we just have to have at least two or more atoms put together. They could be the same or they could be different. So if they're the same, they're molecules. If they're different, they're molecules. So technically, these are compounds and they're also molecules. Now, in order to make compounds or molecules, we have to do chemical reactions to get them together. And so chemical reactions involves making and breaking chemical bonds. And when we make and break chemical bonds, we also are going to talk in the next section about um, releasing energy or absorbing energy. And those are called endothermic or exothermic reactions, but that's for another screencast. Okay. So we are going to make and break chemical bonds to put these atoms together to make compounds and molecules and make new stuff. So there's two equations over here. This one at the top should you're going to learn to love because we're going to talk about photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is when plants take carbon dioxide from the air, water from their up through their roots, and then absorb sunlight. A chemical reaction happens that rearranges all those atoms into sugar, C6H12O6, and oxygen gas. And so if you look, we have carbon, we have oxygen, and we have hydrogen, and some more oxygen on this side. And on this side, we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So everything on this side has to be accounted for on this side. They break apart, find new partners, and make new substances. And that's what a chemical reaction is all about. Down here, same thing. We have propane and oxygen gas. And they will combine to rearrange themselves. They will break their bonds and make new bonds with new partners making new substances, new compounds and molecules. So, um, in order for two atoms to get together in chemical reactions, they have to be attracted to one another, and that's done through one of these four types of bonds, ionic, covalent, hydrogen, or van der Waals. So let's talk about these four bonds today. Ionic bonds is simply, this is a key word, it's a transfer of electrons. That means we're gaining or losing them. They're going from one place to another. And so we talked about ions already. Ions is an atom that has gained or lost electrons. So in essence, an ionic bond forms when ions form. Now, they're trying to get that full valence shell, which is why they're gaining or losing them in the first place. Now, um, in this example, we have two atoms. This one on the left is giving up or transferring an atom, or excuse me, transferring an electron to this atom over here. When that transfer occurs, we have one proton and two electrons. So if we have one proton and two electrons, that gives us a negative one charge. So we have a negative charge over here, which is why it says a negative ion. Negative ions are also called anions. Over here, as soon as it transfers its electron over, we have one proton and no electrons, so we have a plus one charge on this side, and that's a positive ion, and we call that a cation. And we talked about these in the last screencast. Now, you should know that opposites attract, and so if you have a positive and a negative, they will be attracted to each other, and we call that attraction an ionic bond. <clears throat> Looking at some more ionic bond examples. Sodium has one valence electron, and it's looking to get rid of this electron. Calci chloride is looking, or chlorine is looking for one more. So chlorine has seven valence electrons. It's looking for one more right here. Sodium will transfer its one electron to chlorine. And when that happens, sodium gets a positive one charge. Chlorine gets a negative one charge. They form ions. We have a cation and an anion, and opposites attract. Negative one and positive one combine, and we get sodium chloride, or table salt. Over here, magnesium has two valence electrons. Oxygen has six. Magnesium wants to get rid of two. Oxygen wants two. Magnesium transfers its two electrons over to oxygen. And when that happens, magnesium becomes plus two. Oxygen becomes minus two. And opposites attract, and we get magnesium oxide. 
down here. Calcium has two valence electrons it's looking to get rid of. Chlorine is looking for, for one. This one's looking for one, and this one's looking for one. So calcium is going to transfer one to this chlorine and one to this one. Calcium will get a plus two charge, and each of the separate chlorines will get a negative one charge. So we have negative two here and a positive two there, so we get a substance called calcium chloride. And that's what ionic bonds are all about, opposites attracting when ions form. The other type of bond is a much stronger bond called a covalent bond. This is when co means with, valent is what they're um, with or together, and they are sharing your valence electrons. So this is sharing, okay, sharing. Um, <clears throat> and they're trying to fill their valence shells too to become stable. So we have two atoms here. Okay. Now in this scenario, this hydrogen atom is not willing to transfer or give up its electron. And neither is this one. They can't, they can't come to terms. This one wants one, and this one wants one, but neither of them are willing to give them up. So instead, they come to a compromise, and in the compromise, they decide to share their electrons to become stable. And when they share their electrons, their shells overlap, and they share these two electrons at the same time. And so they both become stable, and we get hydrogen gas instead. That's written as H2. So sharing electrons. I go back one slide, two slides. These got transferred over completely. Okay. They're not sharing. But in this one, you could see them sharing between their two orbits. Think of it as, um, I always tell students that if you, if you have a crush on somebody and you're attracted to them, you'll sit next to them in class. But it doesn't mean that you're committed to them. But as soon as you get married, you have to start sharing bills. You have to start sharing the bathroom. You have to share everything in the house. Okay, and it's a much stronger bond. So that think of covalent as being a marriage as an ionic, just being an attraction towards somebody, not, real, not a real big commitment. Okay. And covalent bonds are harder to break, too. So if we look at these covalent bonds, we have two hydrogen atoms. This was the one on the other page. And they're deciding to share instead of transfer. And you can see them sharing these two electrons, this pair right here. So that's hydrogen gas, H2. Over here, we have two fluorines. They each have seven valence electrons. So these seven valence electrons, fluorine's not willing to give up any of its electrons, but it is willing to share one of them with the other one. So you get fluorine gas instead. Okay. Over here, we have two oxygen atoms. They both have six. Carbon has four. It's looking for four more to be happy. And then over here, they are sharing two sets of electrons. And so if you look at this oxygen, okay, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's happy. Carbon has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's happy. This oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Everybody's happy with eight valence electrons through sharing. And we get carbon dioxide. And over here, if you get four fluorines and a carbon, Carbon's looking for four more, fluorine's looking for one more. So you could see them, them sharing, the two different colors right here, they are sharing their electrons. And you get a carbon tetrafluoride molecule instead. Over here, this is water, this is H2O. Water's held together by covalent bonds between the hydrogen and oxygen. They are sharing a pair of electrons. Hydrogen only needs two in this scenario because it only has one shell, and the first shell holds a maximum of two electrons. Oxygen's valence electrons are now eight, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It is now stable by sharing electrons. Now, covalent bonds, there are actually two types of covalent bonds. One is called nonpolar and one is called polar. So, nonpolar covalent bonds are when the electrons are shared equally between the two atoms. So if you look at this one up here, this atom and this atom are pulling equally on the electrons. This atom versus this atom down here, you can see that these electrons are shifted towards one side. When that happens, we call it a polar covalent molecule. Some atoms are stronger at pulling the electrons than other atoms. They're bigger and stronger. Think of you and your little brother and sister, and when your mom says, now you share equally time on that video game, okay? You could either share equally 50-50, okay, if you share 50-50, okay, that would be nonpolar. 
that you're getting equal time. It's not, you know, one time one person isn't getting more time versus the other. But if your mom says to share something equally and you still monopolize it, even though you're giving your little brother or sister a little bit of time playing with it, that you're still sharing, but it's an unequal share. And so that's what we call a polar because it's being shifted towards one side compared to the other. Some atoms are stronger at pulling electrons towards them. It's called electronegativity and they just they're really good at hoarding electrons. And so in this picture down here, the molecule on this side over here is pulling the electrons towards it with greater force. Okay. Think of a tug of war contest and this side is winning. And what it's winning is more electrons, so it gives it a partial negative side which means that, by default, this side's going to be slightly positive. They're not transferring electrons and becoming ions, they're just, it's a shift, it's an unbalancing. So it's an unequal sharing of electrons instead. If they're sharing equally, it's called nonpolar. If they're not sharing equally, it's called polar, because one side will get become more negative, and one side will become more positive. So looking at some examples here, if you have two hydrogen atoms, they're the same size and same strength. So this one would be called nonpolar because those electrons in the triangle, they're in the dead center. They're not being pulled with more force onto one end. Chlorine, two chlorine atoms. This is nonpolar because they're pulling equally on the electrons. But if you put a hydrogen with a chlorine, chlorine is much bigger and stronger at pulling the electrons towards it. So if it's pulling all the negatives here, this side becomes slightly negative, and this side becomes slightly positive, and that's what we call polar. Over here, they are sharing electrons. This is a covalent bond right here. But two oxygen atoms are sharing them equally, so this one would be nonpolar. Water, this is H2O. Now, oxygen is much stronger at pulling the electrons this way away from hydrogen towards it. And so because all the electrons, you could see all the electrons are on this side. So oxygen over here is going to have a slight negative side, and the closest thing to this side is the positive proton. So hydrogen over here, we have a slight positive charge, and water is a polar molecule. So the difference between the three um, we have ionic, where one transfers the electron completely to another atom, and one has a negative charge and one has a positive charge. Two ions, an anion and a cation, form an ionic bond. Then we have sharing electrons. If you're sharing electrons, you could share them equally, which is called nonpolar, or you could share them unequally, which is called polar. Hydrogen. Hydrogen bond right here. Um, hydrogen bonds are between a positive hydrogen and a negative part of another molecule. So we're going molecules to molecules, not atoms to atoms. So in this picture, there's water molecules, okay, H2O molecules. So we're not talking about one hydrogen to another hydrogen. We're talking about an entire water molecule. And I just talked about how water is polar, where the oxygen side is slightly negative, and the hydrogen sides are slightly positive. So if the hydrogen over here is slightly positive, this negative side of the water molecule will be attracted to the positive side of another water molecule with the hydrogen. Okay, it's between hydrogen and the negative part of another molecule, in this case another water molecule. And this bond, this dotted line between them, this attraction, opposites attract, this is called a hydrogen bond. They're very weak bonds that can be broken very easily. So this is a hydrogen bond right here. This one's right here, and this is a hydrogen bond right here. So water is held to other water molecules by hydrogen bonds. Over here, we have water again. Hydrogen has a slight positive charge. The oxygen has a slight negative charge. This is ammonia. Ammonia has a slight negative charge over here because nitrogen pulls all the electrons towards it, which means that these three hydrogens are slightly positive. So the positive hydrogen is attracted to the negative nitrogen of another molecule. And this is called a hydrogen bond. Lastly, we have van der Waals forces. Um, we don't call them van der Waals bonds because they're not true bonds, because they're not sharing or transferring the electrons. This, in these situations, the atom, because the electrons are always in constant motion, they're always moving around that, the atom, 
sometimes, by chance, all the electrons end up on one side of the atom. And so that means if all the electrons are on one side of the atom, when they're moving, that one side will be slightly negative and one side will be slightly positive. Now, this only lasts for less than a split second, a very short, quick um, time. And in this time, this is happening to all atoms where the electrons are moving, and sometimes they happen to be all in one side of the atom just for a split second. The negative side and the positive side of two atoms that are next to each other will be attracted to each other. And this is what a van der Waals force is. It only lasts for a short time, less than a fraction of a se second before it's broken, but then new ones are always being made and, new, and they're always being broken all at the same time. So they're always there. And this is exactly how something like a gecko would climb up a vertical surface like a window. And so when the gecko's climbing up the wall, it's not because they have su su suction cups on their fingertips, or because they have some sort of gluey, sticky substance that causes them to stick to the window, it's because of van der Waals forces. And if you look at the toes of the gecko, it, they look like these tiny little ridges. The ridges are really, under a microscope, millions of microscopic hairs. And the atoms that make up, the atoms and molecules that make up these microscopic hairs exhibit van der Waals forces, allowing the gecko to defy gravity. And so, um, if anybody's a fan of uh, Spider-Man, and Spider-Man could climb up walls, and it's because of Van der Waals forces. And if you ever watched Spider-Man when Peter Parker was transferring in the alleyway, and he looked at his fingers, and there's hairs coming out of his fingers, and then he climbed up the brick build building to the top, he did that via Van der Waals forces. So that's an interesting little side note. So we have four different types of bonds. One is called ionic, where they transfer electrons, and then the ions are attracted to each other. We have covalent bonds. Covalent is a sharing of electrons, and that's the strongest type of bond there is. Covalent bonds is why molecules form in the first place. And then we have um, hydrogen bonds, which is a positive hydrogen of one molecule being attracted to a negative part of another molecule, like water to water or water to ammonia. And then we have van der Waals forces, which isn't really a true bond, but it's a quick, short-lived attraction between two different things. All right, hopefully this was helpful, and I will see you in class. Bye.